hello and welcome to day six of the 12 carols of Christmas. We're so glad that you've joined us again today. I'm really excited about today's carol. It's really technically not a carol there again, but it is a very familiar song that we hear throughout the holiday season. And it's from Handel's Messiah, um, and it's called For Unto Us a Child is Born. Handel wrote his Messiah in 1741, and um, as part of that, he, um, he used Isaiah 9-6 as the foundation of this particular song. So I'm going to just begin by reading, and I'm going to start in Isaiah um, 9 uh, verse 2 and then skip to verse 6. So it says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. And that passage of scripture was echoed then in Matthew 4, verse 16 in the New Testament. Because here we are with the fulfillment of this promise that um, they were waiting for. And so verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Um, and so I love this song because it is straight scripture. <laughs> And I, I love the fact that it focuses on that fulfillment of prophecy and it focuses on, again, who Jesus is, our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. But when Jesus was born, he really um, turned those expectations um, upside down for the people who were waiting for Messiah. Just like often he turns our expectations upside down. They were expecting this king, all this royalty, all this majesty. And as we've talked about in previous days, he was born in a meager stable um, alone, um, just with Mary and Joseph and those closest to him in this manger in at night, in this silence of night. And so all through his life, he has turned our expectations um, really upside down. And I think about scriptures like Matthew 2, 16, which is the first shall be last and the last shall be first. That's not culture's way of thinking about things. That's counterculture. Um, or, you know, Matthew 5, which um, I'll read some of these words to you. These are the Beatitudes when it says, um, Jesus taught, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And it goes on and on. Um, just like I said, turning upside down what we think things should be like. And so as I thought about who, who I see Jesus to be in this carol, in this piece of music, I do see that he's the wonderful counselor, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. But I also see attributes like humility and meekness and servanthood. Because when I think about that passage, uh, that phrase in the middle of this passage that says the government will be on his shoulders. Um, the government will ultimately one day be on his shoulders, meaning that he will reign on this earth as king of kings and as lord of lords. But when he was here walking on this earth, the way he did ministry, the way he ruled, really, and reigned was, again, um, not the expectation that one would think. I think about leaders today. Leaders today want power. The more power, the better. Leaders today want to surround themselves with servants. Like, the more servants you have, the more important you are. Jesus came to be a servant. He did not surround himself with servants that would that would serve him. He came to serve rather than to be served. His power was found in the fact that he had the power to wash his disciples' feet. He exercised that power. Um, leaders today, they trade their influence for money. Scripture tells us um, in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So Jesus came to give, not to take. Leaders today, um, like generals, I think of army, um, you know, military, um, and they that when they want to advance in a kingdom or in a in a in a country, war is at hand many times. 
For Jesus, um, his was all about peace and rest in our hearts. And then leaders, the more powerful and successful and influential they become, the less accessible they become. And that the opposite is true with Jesus. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He is always accessible to his people. And so thinking about those things, it just reminds me of, like I said, his humility. He came to serve rather than to be served. He um, was not about the pomp and circumstance. He was about glorifying his father. That was his vision. That was his main goal, was to glorify God. And he came in a humble estate. He walked this earth humbly. He died a death that was very humble, humbling. And he served with meekness, which is really strength under control. And he was a servant and wanted to serve those around him. So when I think about that, it really does make me stop and say, yes, in his humility, in his meekness, in his servanthood, he was still the mighty, um, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And when I think about being a wonderful counselor, what a counselor is, someone who gives us wisdom and discernment and insight and helps us with our, with our, with our problems, with, that, with the things that we're going through, helps us to see things for what they really are. I think about the spirit of God that dwells in us as our counselor. Scripture says, when the counselor, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach us all things and remind us of what we'd been, what had been said. He is that wonderful counselor. He is a mighty God. He's a mighty warrior. He defeated death. He's our everlasting father. There will be no end. And he is the Prince of Peace. Are you allowing the Prince of Peace to reign and rule over your heart um, during this season, during this time? Are you praising God um, that he is your wonderful counselor? Are you living a life like Jesus did on earth? His example of humility and of servanthood and of meekness. Where might you need to employ some meekness? I know I could answer that question myself, just thinking about some of my responses sometimes and the way I, I behave. So I hope that this helps you today as you focus on um, that child born in a manger, but who grew into that man who was God in flesh, who led with authority, but with humility, meekness, and a heart of a servant. I hope that encourages you today. We will see you tomorrow.